This final third video of this lecture notebook is quite short. Here we're talking about importing and using a module of classes. So here I have a module called, um, let's see if I can find it here, common functions, all right, that I want to import as CF. So I've created this, I have a module path, I've put this uh, common um, functions.py module in the same directory, the same folder on my Google Drive as this notebook. So if I look at file and I go locate and drive for this notebook, see, so you'll just kind of find it here. There I have my common functions.py. And if I go ahead and click on this, so we can kind of open, we can do a preview. In this, I'll just go ahead and open it up with the text editor. These are all things we saw before in the module three part of this course. So I have this function template that I'm using. Within the module, you'll also see I'm importing NumPy and PyPlot from uh, Matplotlib so that I can have this, because I'm using those within this module. And then I have this function template that is just, you know, for making objects. This is my super class for everything. It's just a template. You can read through the code comments for this. I have my initialization. It's just nothing because it's just a template. I have my evaluation, which is nothing because it's just a template. But one thing that I'm going to do is also is just plot. This is motivated by what we saw with the polynomials. It's some plot function. Now, polynomial, I'm going to define as a subclass of this function template. So now that plot method is already attached to it. So what I can really do for every type of function I want to code up in my common functions is I can just put in the way in what, what should be used to initialize it, like coefficients should be used to initialize a polynomial. And then how do I evaluate a polynomial? Well, it's like through some sort of looping. It's very simple. And then I could have something like a sine function. And what I want to do is to have sine functions that have an amplitude A and some frequency omega. So the way they get initialized are with these omega and A parameters. And if you just call the sine function, if you if you instantiate it with default values, so just with nothing passed to it, these default values are used. And then that creates an amplitude and a frequency, A and omega. And so then when I go to evaluate it, it takes self.a times np.sign. That's why I imported numpy as np in this, uh, in this file here in this module. And then I have that self.omega times x. That's how it evaluates a sine of x at some given x value. It uses these, these data attributes, self.a and self.omega. Similarly with cosine, notice I don't have default values here. I'm just showing you different ways of doing things, and the evaluation is different because it has cosine, but it is otherwise the same. I do a similar thing with logarithms, where I want to evaluate maybe a times log base b of x. And so here, I'm using a common how you change the base of logs using the standard, this is the natural log, but if you evaluate the natural log at b, well, anyways, it's math. But I'm just showing you lots of ways in which I can code these functions as subclasses of this function template. So they all are inheriting their plot function, um, the plot functionality. And in that plot functionality, let's just go back to that. Here it is. Yeah. It calls the self.evaluate. It calls the evaluate method at the array of x plot values, which is meant to plot. That's it. That's all that's going on. And I have like my logarithm function. I have exponential functions where it's a times b raised to the x power. And that's kind of it. I'm just showing a basic, basic set of these things. So it's just an example to give you kind of a, something with some meaning. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mount this drive. i got to connect to Google Drive. So it's going to show all these things. All right, connect, allow. <laughs> I know I'm sure everyone's really tired of doing that every time they run this code cell. But it'll take a second because, again, I have a lot of stuff on my Google Drive. I think it's you know 10 to 12 gigabytes of things that have to get mounted. All right, so it's mounted. I have my path. Remember, if, if your path is different, you don't have things set up like me, and this, and this is, uh, you know, this is my path here. What you need to do, go to your files, you know, find where you put this in your drive. You know, it should be like in Colab Notebooks or whatever. I'm just going to go to where I had it just so you can see it's right here, and it's in Lectures. And you can copy the path of the file. But you, what you really want is the folder containing the file. And if you copy the path for it, so I'll just do that there, come back down here, just to show you. If I throw that there, that's actually the path that I have listed here. If I copy the path of the file and I put it here, then you'll see that it ends with common functions. I'll hide the name of the file. You got to delete that. Now you have the right path. And whatever yours is, when you do that, 
that's what you should have in your module path. And I'm just calling it module path here. It's the path for the folder containing that file. So every time I close that side pane, it kind of restructures, it moves things vertically on, the, on here. So now I run this, I insert my module path, and you should make sure that the user defined module common functions.py is located in the same folder as this notebook. That's what you should do. I mean, you don't have to, you can, you can have it wherever you want, just make sure your path is set correctly if you're not following how I'm doing it. So we're gonna play with this module in the class that it contains below. So here's a suggested activity, create and plot several instantiations of each of the classes of functions within this module. It's just fun to play with. You can just start getting used to this. So I'm gonna import common functions as CF. So I've imported the module. Now I'm gonna do cf.polynomial. This is behaving kind of like how NumPy works. We import NumPy as NP and then we do like NP.array. Well, okay, this is cf.polynomial. And I'm gonna create this list of coefficients and instead of making a NumPy array, I'm, I'm making a polynomial. And with 0, 0, 1, that's creating the polynomial x squared. And then of course, I'm gonna plot it from negative two to two because it inherits that plot function from the template. And there you'll see the plot in that blue dotted curve, just like what we saw before with the polynomial class, except this is coming from coded within in here, within the common functions uh, module. If I actually use this with this question mark, we'll see this opens up this help pane here. It has this um, doc string. It talks about what the class is, right? It says this is, you know, this is just all the stuff. If you go look in my common functions here, you'll see that these are the type of doc strings that I have here. So, and I'm just providing, I'm, I'm commenting in the way you should comment, format the uh, doc strings and comments within a um, class. I'm following best coding practices there in terms of the style of those doc strings. And then if you do help, I'm going to close this. So that's with the question mark. That's one type of help that's given. If you do help, it gives you more information. This actually also shows that this is an inherited class. And so I'll show that below. Let's see here. So it also has this methods inherited from the function template. So it gives you some additional information that I don't believe that this was what was shown when we did this with the question mark there. So I'll just see. So notice, right, that was not given. The idea that of what this was for uh, as a subclass, what it was inheriting. That's what's given here when we run help. So it just gives you more information. Like help is a more verbose form of the help command than just putting a question mark somewhere. The question mark is for kind of like a very quick look at some documentation, but it's more limited than using help. Um, they both have their place. I'm just showing you more things. And so now I can create a sine function. I'm going to create um, a frequency of two times pi, and I'm going to create an amplitude of five. I'm just going to go ahead and show the plot of that. And there you see this, the amplitude is five. It's going up to five, down to negative five, and from zero to one, that's going through an entire cycle because the period is, uh, excuse me, because the frequency is two pi. So that's it. Um, you have your summary activity that you have to do below. You can, if you want to play around with anything with the common functions .py mo module, you need to submit that. Uh, if you're going to make changes to this module or create your own module with classes, then in, you need to submit that with your um, summary activity. But otherwise, the same thing goes as ever as every other summary activity. Make these points thoughtful, complete sentences, describe the meaning of what's going on, and have code examples that are well aligned with it. If I was you, I wouldn't bother with importing a, um, a module with classes, but you know that's just me. I think there's enough things to summarize here without this last part. But that's really it for this video. I just wanted to show you that you can create a module with lots of useful classes. And you might do that because you might say, imagine, I mean, I really think that this is how we should be teaching calculus, for instance, that as we're going through understanding uh, functions and their properties and their derivatives and integrals, you could have a module that's written that has all these different functions. And the first thing you're doing is plotting them. And then you're studying limits and continuity and all these properties very visually. And so you have, with each of these function types, you attach to it evaluation uh, methods and plotting methods. And then what you could do is you could attach this like differences, these ways of approximating derivatives numerically to get then ideas conceptually, visually of what the derivatives look like. And then as you learn the actual calculus um, theorems and, the, and all these results of how to compute the derivatives in closed form, you could then add as you were learning that to your class of like your exponential functions, your logarithmic, your sine, your cosine, your polynomials, you could add functions that encode the derivative rules to construct those derivatives as, as new data attributes. And they could be calling other types of function objects 
as as that happens sometimes when you take a derivative of one function it's just transforming it into a potentially different function now polynomials derivatives of polynomials are polynomials but the derivative of like a logarithmic function like a natural log is something like one over the argument you know and there could be chain rule and stuff if you're not following along it's not really the point my point is you could teach a class and if you went through and were teaching yourself this material or reviewing it you could be tracking your understanding in code in classes that are getting new method and data attributes as you learn more things about the properties of that function in terms of how calculus or other concepts are interacting with that function and you could say some of these maybe belong in a parent class, some of these maybe belong in the specific instance of the class. But if you approach your disciplines this way, with this kind of object-oriented perspective, this object-oriented programming perspective, you would develop a very deep understanding of how to go from the, the theory to the practice. And I think it would help drive a lot of concepts home. So I, I hope you consider that as you move forward beyond this prologue lecture and beyond this class about how these types of concepts can be applied in other courses uh, in, that you're taking or other things you learn throughout your life in a way of organizing your thoughts, organizing the knowledge, the, the functions, the data, the methods, the information around a problem you're solving in a really organized, coherent, logical way. I think it's very beneficial, and I hope you got something out of this lecture. Thank you.